Greetings, I'm John from Two Brothers RC, and today I'm going to talk to you about the E-Flight Viper 70mm. Now pretty much every other channel on YouTube has already covered this jet, so there's not much more that I can tell you that other people already have it. We know the jet is awesome, we've been told it's awesome, and we can see that it's awesome. It is the jet that I learned how to fly on, and Horizon describes it as a perfect full house first jet for beginners. Now if you want a jet that is awesome and you can learn how to fly better with it and you want to get the most out of it, this video is for you. I'm going to teach you how to land it, I'm going to teach you how to take off with it, I'm going to teach you about stalls, I'm going to tell you everything I know about this jet so that you can get the most out of it. For those of you who want to get up to bigger models, the Viper 70 is a perfect choice and it will teach you exactly how bigger jets fly. So let's get into it and see what this thing can do. Learning to fly is like learning to ride a bicycle. You can make it easier with a jet like the Habu, which is like riding a bicycle with training wheels. Flying a Viper is like flying without training wheels. You're going to risk falling over and crashing sometimes. You'll learn about accelerated stalls. You'll learn stick discipline and how to avoid yanking the airplane into a stall to begin with. You'll understand why your airplane flies. And if you just want to fly and have fun, the Habu is a perfect first choice. Don't let me dissuade you from it. If you want to learn how to fly though, and really exceed your own limits, the Viper is the airframe that I recommend to everyone. Let's get started with takeoffs. This is one area where a lot of pilots new to the Viper will struggle. Many pilots use way too much flap and yank the plane into the sky before it's ready to rotate on its own. This separates airflow over one of the wings and will instantly stall it right into the ground. How do I know? Because I've seen it happen to many people many times over, and it's even happened to me when I made my Viper balance too far rearward. Good takeoff technique involves keeping the jet tracking straight with rudder. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's a fun challenge to try and keep a center line and avoid deviating from it. Throttle up smoothly, then gently pull the elevator to rotate the jet into the sky. One of the best ways to practice this is with consistent touch and goes. Spend a few batteries practicing landing and taking off. There are some days that I just do this constantly. That is how I can land on a five meter wide strip every single time. Constant practice. It does pay off and it is worth investing in your skill set. Touch and goes are fantastic practice precisely because they combine landing and taking off into a single maneuver. Touch and goes performed consistently will improve your landing so much that a few sessions of doing them constantly will make you improve noticeably. We'll get into touch and go practice here pretty soon, but let's cover landings first. Landing requires understanding that an aircraft must move forward somehow in order to bring it down gently. You get that forward momentum in two ways, either with thrust achieved by using the throttle stick or airspeed gained by pushing the nose down. We'll cover thrustless landings in a moment. Most newer pilots will feel comfortable flying with some power on the back end of the stick. If you land with throttle, flatten the approaches that you take and keep about 10% throttle to keep the jet flying level. As you get close to the ground, pull the elevator stick to flare the jet and bleed off airspeed until the jet touches down on the mains. It's pretty tricky to do with the Viper, so don't feel bad if you end up doing a three-point landing. If you're coming in with a shallow approach, anytime the jet is kept at a constant altitude, it must have a source of airspeed to maintain lift and continue flying. You need something to keep it displacing air and moving forward without stalling. Many pilots don't realize this, then they level the jet out without adding thrust to compensate and wonder why it just dropped into the ground. Let's cover why that happens now, so voiceover John will let Flying John take over and explain. So all this movement that you guys are seeing on the camera right now is not because of me rolling it. As you watch my hands, as uh, you know, Flying John takes over from voiceover John here, you see the plane is dropping wings on its own and stalling through the sky, even though I've got throttle applied. So going into a minimum radius turn like this, you're going to see the plane just, there, there it goes, it rolls. And then it rolls some more, and if I kept holding it, it would have rolled right into the ground. Now this gets even worse when you guys have your gear out and your flaps out. Actually, I was half flaps there, so that made it even more aggravated. But when you got your gear and your flaps out, a lot of people yank, but they do it with their power off. And then they try to bank into the into the pattern, and then there goes the wing, and the plane stalls, and everybody thinks, oh, that's a uh, that's an aileron servo going bad, but that's not the case. So now you know what causes a stall. Not airspeed, because airplanes can stall at any airspeed, but angle of attack, which is forced through elevator input. The more back elevator pressure you apply, the stronger the angle of attack becomes. 
This will continue until the wing reaches its critical angle of attack where it stalls no matter what airspeed it's flying at. Hence you're seeing the jet roll around in slow-mo here even though I've applied full throttle and I'm not commanding roll input at all. If you see a stall, throttle up and push the nose down. Counter the roll with opposite rudder, so if it stalls right, add left rudder. This will correct the stall without making it worse. Trying to roll out of a stall generally makes the stall worse and can easily lead to a crash. The key to landing safely and maneuvering safely is to avoid yanking the elevator stick. Make precise, deliberate movements and you'll rarely run into a stall unless you're trying to force the jet into one. Now, let's touch on thrustless landings because you might think that this flies in the face of the stall advice that I just gave you, but contrary to popular opinion, it is not only possible but entirely practicable to land without even a touch of thrust with the Viper. The key is to manage the descent of the jet and convert the altitude of the airplane into kinetic energy. Push the nose down. The jet will speed up until it hits the ground. Pull the nose up, the jet slows down until it stalls. There's a happy medium here. The idea is to push the nose down to keep the air flowing over the wings, but don't push it down so much that the jet smashes into the ground. You can even take this power off technique to its most absurd extreme and perform forward slips from 400 feet up in the air, dropping down to a precision landing right in front of you. With enough practice, it's actually really easy. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah, but uh, well, I just dropped it from 200 feet yeah. and it almost precision landed. Now take the stall training, landing, and takeoff skills you'll develop from watching this video and apply that to constant touch and go practice with your own Viper jet. Spend four batteries doing nothing but touch and goes and watch each one of your approaches improve as you keep taking the advice I've given you and apply it to your skill set. Master these techniques with the Viper and you'll see why I consider it to be an amazing trainer jet. The point of a trainer isn't just to be something that's easy to fly, it's also to teach you how to fly. The Viper stalls just like bigger jets, but at a fraction of the cost. This jet is an investment in your flight skills, so consider picking it up via the link in the description to help support us and what we do here at Two Brothers RC. Join us on Discord and share your own landings with us too, because we'd love to see them. See you guys next time.